Hello people, in this video, we want to look at the tumors of salivary glands. So, you know what the salivary glands, the major salivary glands, parotid gland, submandibular gland, sublingual gland. So, we want to look at the neoplasms of uh, or the tumors of this salivary gland. May, they can ask this question also as parotid neoplasms. So, you'll just have to list the same things. Okay, so what are those? So, you have benign and uh, malignant conditions. Benign can be epithelial origin or mesenchymal origin. Ma malignant also can be epithelial origin or mesenchymal origin. <coughs> Benign usually will just have oma. In the end, you can see here adenoma, 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 <coughs> lymphoma, hemangioma, oma, oma, only omas, okay. Whether it is epithelial or mesenchymal. But when it comes to malignant, if it is epithelial, if it is epithelial origin, what will it be? Carcinoma. Epithelial carcinoma. If it is mesenchymal, sarcoma. Right? So, a carcinoma and sarcoma both are malignant conditions only. So, carcinoma will be epithelial origin, malignant condition. Sarcoma will be mesenchymal origin, malignant condition. So, major names that you will have to write will be under uh, benign, under pleomorph, uh, under epithelial, you have to write pleomorphic adenoma. Right and uh, Warthin's tumor. These two are very common. You should know these two. Then there is something also called as um, oxophil adenoma or oncocytoma. If you want, you can remember that. Hemangioma, lymphangioma, those also you can remember. Okay, these are benign conditions for salivary glands. For malignant conditions, you can remember squamous cell carcinoma. Just basically remember that there are carcinomas and sarcomas. So, carcinoma, you have squamous cell carcinoma that you already told. Mucoepidermoid carcinoma, adenoid cystic carcinoma that has a specific name called a cylindroma. Okay. So, you have mucoepidermoid carcinoma, cylindroma, which is nothing but an adenoid cystic carcinoma. Then you have acinic cell carcinoma, malignant mixed tumor, squamous cell carcinoma, so many other and sarcoma also you will write for mesenchymal origin. So, these were just the names. What are the names that you learnt? Under benign, under epithelial, we saw pleomorphic adenoma, Warthin tumor, right? Uh, Warthin tumor is also called as what? Uh, it is also called as adenolymphoma. Then, uh, then we saw under mesenchymal, hemangioma, lymphangioma, etc. Then, coming to a malignant condition, we saw squamous cell carcinoma, then uh, mucoepidermoid carcinoma, mixed cell tumor, mixed malignant, Malignant mixed tumor, then we saw something called a cylindroma, acinic cell carcinoma. And under uh, mesenchymal origin, we saw sarcoma, simply the name sarcoma they have given. Okay. So, let us look at this pleomorphic adenoma. Basically, this pleomorphic adenoma, here the images are, see this is pleomorphic adenoma. Basically, this pleomorphic adenoma, right, what you can see here, it is um, uh, in the list also, if you see it, it is the it is the top one, right? It is the most, the first mentioned one is pleomorphic adenoma. So, what does it mean? It is the most common benign tumor of salivary glands. It's the most common, so you should know it. Here, what happens, uh, usually it affects parotid, etc. You should understand this pattern. You can see this pink and purple or blue, pink and blue kind of pattern. So, basically, it's a mixed tumor. It has both epithelial and mesenchymal elements. This is what is unique about it. It's not just epithelial. It has, uh, when you see the histology, it is a mixed tumor. It has epithelial and mesenchymal elements, okay? So, um, the stroma of the tumor may be mucoid, fibroid, vascular, mixochondroid, chondroid, okay? And... Um, Basically, you just remember it has epithelial components and mesenchymal components, right? Uh, pseudocartilage, etc. is mesenchymal component. Epithelial components like ducts, acinite, tubules, sheets, strands, etc. So, this is what you should understand. Okay. So, usually it arises from the tip of the, uh, the tail of the parotid. So, this pleomorphic adenoma, what will they do? Finally, they have to do some parotidectomy, right? So, surgical excision, some tissue, normal tissue around it also, they'll have to remove. So, anyways, these uh, individual videos are the pleomorphic adenoma we have seen. Now, let's, let's take a look at this Warthin tumor. We are just looking briefly into these neoplasms. So, Warthin's tumor, uh, so what have they shown here? Let's look at this Warthin tumor. So, here, adenolymphoma or Warthin tumor, it is also benign condition, epithelial. So, you can see here, it looks like very purplish, right? Like lymph. Uh, that's why it is called as 
adeno lymphoma right lymphomatosum papillary cyst adenoma lymphomatosum that is also yet another name for this warthin tumor okay so histologically what will you see here obviously you will see epithelial components but apart from that you will also see lymphoid elements that's why this name lymphoma right lymphoid elements you will see again what will you do here parotidectomy so there are many other conditions oncocytoma or oxyphil adenoma right uh, this arises from the acidophilic cells that's why as, as um, oxyphil adenoma acidophilic cells guys let's move on to hemangioma basically it is uh, the most common benign tumor of parotid in children okay fine so hemangioma most common benign tumor of parotid in children basically it increases in size um, on crying and if it does not regress spontaneously again same thing surgical excision okay again for lymphangioma surgical excision these are all uh, not so common okay so you have to remember what and all let us see we'll try to remember only three here pleomorphic adenoma warthin tumor and uh, hemangioma because it is common in children okay now let us move on to the malignant condition so basically in the malignant one what you have to understand is that it just mention the same thing standard for everything okay it what it affects facial nerve so there can be facial nerve paralysis okay so it affects what facial nerve so there can be facial nerve paralysis it can affect the lymph nodes then it can affect the other things right muscles neck structures so they will mostly go for what parotidectomy right and uh, at that time they will have to preserve the facial nerve but otherwise uh, at times they cannot preserve the facial nerve so these are standard things that you write for everything now just let's look at these names mucoepidermoid carcinoma basically mucoepidermoid carcinoma is uh, um what is it there are mucin producing cells in this and squamous cells okay in that there can be low grade high grade what else you have to see low grade will have better prognosis obviously in this they can go for superficial parotidectomy in high grade they'll have to go for a total parotidectomy facial nerve will also have to be sacrificed okay then coming to cylindroma so uh, everything is almost the same okay cylindroma in cylindroma what will be there cylindroma was an old name where it looked like cylinders apparently um, but to me it doesn't look like cylinders this is the adenoid cystic carcinoma you can see here like um, uh, like cheese will have some holes right like that hole 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 so they are saying it's looking like cheese so cheese looks like cheese that's what they are saying so you have to remember cylindroma is adenoid cystic carcinoma <clears throat> so it looks like cheese again in this um, <clears throat> there can be facial nerve paralysis it can metastasize to lymph nodes it can in metastasize to lymph nodes to lung brain bone so they are involving more organs here right lung brain and bone so again what will you do here radical parotidectomy the name here acinic cell carcinoma then adenocarcinoma then malignant mixed tumor then squamous cell carcinoma for squamous cell carcinoma basically what can you say this they are saying is rapidly growing again radical parotidectomy you will do right it can involve the neck nodes it can uh, they have to do radical parotidectomy here they can also have to try to remove a portion of the mandible okay so in this one uh, they might have to follow up this the surgeries with radiation also okay that much you can remember so do you remember uh, how that looked squamous cell carcinoma see squamous cell carcinoma with keratin pearls and all that do you remember this squamous cell carcinoma with keratin pearls okay so last uh, uh, what will you mention sarcoma sarcoma basically they are saying rhabdomyosarcoma may arise from parotid so example they are saying could be rhabdomyo sarcoma can arise from parotid so these were the tumors of sali salivary glands that is the names we have learned right and we have understood how uh, they look pleomorphic warthin then uh, cylindroma squamous cell carcinoma right uh, mucoepidermoid carcinoma also exists what else generally if they ask you you can say all the symptoms uh, that uh, the person will present with lump facial paralysis right 
Okay, so we have looked at what? All the tumors of salivary glands or you can call it as parotid neoplasms also. So mainly they will affect uh, water all glands, parotid gland, submandibular gland and sublingual gland. So that's all for now. Hope you got all the names. Pleomorphic, warthin, oxophil, oxophil, right? Oxophil, yes. Then you had hemangioma. Then in the uh, malignant side, you had mucoepidermoid. Then you had uh, the cylindroma, that is adenoid cystic carcinoma. Then you have the squamous cell carcinoma and the sarcoma, which can be rhabdomyosarcoma. Okay, that's all for now. Bye-bye.